Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhouseonboon.com and today I am so excited to finally share with you our Victorian farmhouse kitchen reveal. So we started on this project about six months ago. It took way longer than I expected, but looking back, we bought this house one year ago. So we did live through having no kitchen sink for about six months, but that's all behind us now. And I have a kitchen that I absolutely love. Very first, I want to bring up here a picture of how this kitchen looked before. It was super dark. The trim was all painted brown. I wish it had been the original wood, but it was all a dark chocolate brown. The walls were paneling. The back wall was full of just kind of nice cabinets, but not my favorite color. And then the window behind me was super small and it looks out over our property, over our kids' playground, our barn. It's a view I want to see, and I knew that we were gonna be getting a much larger window. That was a for sure on the list. We picked up a 1949 caloric gas stove on Facebook Marketplace. We had it restored. We had a gas line run to it, and now I'm cooking with gas here in my kitchen in a lovely vintage stove. Above the stove, I have some open shelving. I actually snagged a wooden shelf at an antique shop for, I think, $25. We hung it. The wood just stood out way too much, so I painted it the exact same color as the beadboard on the walls. Then I filled it with some of my favorite things like some of my ironstone pottery. As well as some pretty little mugs. I also have a candle that a friend of mine made for me that is brass and it all kind of ties in. Moving over to the sink, I found a cast iron high back apron front farmhouse sink at a salvage shop. It was already in really great condition. It just needed to be cleaned up. So I used some lime away and a lot of elbow grease to get it in tip top shape. For the cabinets, we did a shaker style with inset doors and drawers. When he first came and brought the first drawer stack, it had the outline around the drawers. I don't really know how else to describe that. And I decided that I liked the flat panel better. And so instead of going all in on that detail, I had him do the rest of those flat. Now I eventually will do different covers so that they all match. But for now, I'm loving the flat look best for my drawers. We had the cabinets custom built by a local cabinet maker, but my husband and I did build the feet for the bottom. Now, when I say build, I mean that I drew it on some wood and then he cut it out with a jigsaw. It gives it a little pretty detail that makes it look more custom and like its own piece of furniture. I do love that the sink cabinet sits up higher than the other cabinets and also starts down lower so that it really kind of stands alone. Now for the countertops, we went with a quartz. I did the Allen Plus Roth brand in the color Peaceful from Lowe's. I really like that it looks like marble, but it isn't actually marble. That was my goal. And I was a little bit worried that when they came, they wouldn't look how I wanted them to because I just picked off a little tiny sample for the color, but they turned out to be just what I wanted. We also topped our wooden island here with the same quartz, and it has some large veining that I really love. Now the island was also built by the same cabinet maker that built our cabinets, and it was made with red oak. I will look up where we actually got the legs. It was somewhere online and had him build it, and then we had it topped with the quartz. So I will link all sources below, the faucet, the fridge, the rug, the island legs, anything I can think of in this, I'll link below, and I'm sure you'll think of more things and tell me that I should add. Now over on the refrigerator side, I told you guys I found a little piece that came from an antique shop, it was green. We cut it down to size and fit it in that little gap so that the refrigerator has ventilation, but it still looks really pretty and we don't see that gap. For the hardware, I went with latches on the doors and bin pulls on the drawers, all in black. I always have a lot of cast iron sitting on top of my stove. I have no intentions to ever move it from that spot because I use it all the time. And it kind of ties in that black because that's a permanent fixture in our kitchen. Now I thought about hanging cast iron on the wall, but it would almost be more inconvenient for me to get it down all the time because 
I sometimes even cook with four cast iron skillets at a time. And so just leaving them out on the stove is really handy. Over next to the stove, we had to cut the beadboard that we put on the walls because there was an old electrical box thing that we weren't supposed to cover up per the contractor's recommendations. We could not find the right piece to cover it. So finally, I got the idea that we could put up a couple of cutting boards and that's what we did. It covers that space just fine. And then below that, I put a knife magnet. And now I have everything I need to cut right next to the stove, which is perfect. And then that hole is covered up. Now for the window, in order to make it tie in with everything else in this house, we had some custom trim made from a local woodworker and then I found the rosettes at an antique shop Now we did the same thing with the pantry because when we bought this house the pantry Entrance had some kind of like cheap small pieces of trim that mimic the Victorian style But aren't actually and so we did the same thing there We trimmed it out with the kind that matches the rest of the house now that I didn't actually have custom made I found that trim just at a salvage shop and that made me realize I could have totally done the same thing for the window I just hadn't thought of that yet, but it again matches So I found the rosettes the trim and the blocks for the bottom all at different antique shops I've been collecting them kind of over the last six months and now the entrance to the pantry matches all of the rest of the trim for the walls when we moved into this house the walls of the kitchen were an old weird paneling we don't really know why they did that at some point we didn't rip them out to see why they did it we just covered it with beadboard so to me it was a really good solution i ended up loving the beadboard i think it adds such a lovely detail all throughout the kitchen and that was really just a cheap way to cover up what was under there but it looks really nice and we painted the walls Benjamin Moore White Dove. It's the same color that we have in the dining room area of this kitchen, which is just the other half of the kitchen. But this half has the beadboard, this half just has the plaster. There's kind of a nice distinction between the two so that it actually totally flows. For extra storage, we brought in an antique hutch. This is where the previous owners had their refrigerator and it stores all of our plates and bowls, the dishes that we use regularly. Now there is still a ton of open space. We actually have a few drawers that don't even have anything in them yet. So we have absolutely plenty of space. And then I even have the large cabinet door it houses my grain mill and my wheat. So I have an extension cord plugged into the grain mill so that whenever I want to grind wheat, I just plug it in on the outlet above it and then pour the wheat in it. So I'm able to feed my sourdough starter a lot easier because that sits in my little baking corner area where there is my mixer and then my sourdough starter and my flour. So those who follow me a while, you might notice the KitchenAid mixer and I've always been a big fan of the Bosch. Now the reason I got the KitchenAid is I got sick of pulling my Bosch in and out of the pantry. Now of course I could just leave the Bosch on my countertops, but since I'm a blogger, and taking pretty photos is part of my livelihood. It made sense to me to get something that would look pretty in the photos and not have to be removed every time. Now, if you watched our original kitchen plans video, you might notice a few differences from the original plan. One thing is we did go with some cabinetry built around the refrigerator. Now, I hadn't thought of that originally, but my contractor mentioned it. And I really liked the idea because I didn't want to see the side of the refrigerator. And so this was a really good way to hide it. Now, whenever you look straight into our kitchen from the entrance of our house and the entrance of the kitchen, you don't even see the refrigerator at all because of this center divided area that houses the pantry. And so I actually really like it because it gives us a little bit of extra storage and it hides the side of the refrigerator, but it also isn't something that you see right when you walk in. It's kind of tucked away over in a corner and it's just really functional. For the lighting, we went with this three light pendant chandelier type of thing here over our island. That just provides a lot of lighting over my massive workspace, which we've had this now for a couple of weeks and I'm obsessed with having this much workspace. This huge island table is amazing. I cannot believe I never had this before. On the back wall, we have two sconces that kind of have the same brass color as my chandelier here. And then over in the dining portion, which is just behind the camera here, 
we have an antique chandelier and the colors just all tie together. I love the blend and balance of old and new. I also wanted this kitchen to be a place where you could leave wooden spoons out in a crock on the counter and functional things like my aprons hanging on a hook would all look at home. The idea was to not make this pristine, perfect, white, gray, but just to have that more lived in, collected feel, if you know what I mean. Now, to bring in a little bit of color, I brought in a rug. Again, I will link it in the description box below. This is actually a new rug. It is not vintage. However, it kind of has a vintage vibe to it, which is why I chose it. And I like that it's nice and dark because it's sitting in the area that's gonna get a lot of action. This is where I do my cooking, but I really love the pop of color that it brings. Of course, my Berkey water filter will always be sitting on my counter. We found a nice home for it right to the right of the sink. Something really cool that I didn't anticipate but found out pretty quickly is that my top part of my Berkey actually fits underneath my faucet so I can fill the whole Berkey without using a pitcher or a half gallon mason jar like we always used to do. I just take it off, put it under the water and then put it back on. So that's totally a game changer. If you have no clue what I'm talking about with the Berkey, I do have a review on this channel and why we use it for our filtered water. I will leave a link of that in the description box below. I will be doing a blog post probably in the next week. It'll be up on my blog. I'll leave a link in the description below. It's a place where I'll add any details that I might have missed. So if I get some frequently asked questions, that will all be in there because I can update a blog post whereas I can't update a video. And so anything that ends up coming up, if you have a question, it might very likely be on that blog post. Overall, I'm really happy that we spent so much time thinking through the details of this kitchen renovation because I love how it turned out. Now to see a full tour of what is behind the camera right now, so the dining portion of this kitchen, it is an Eden kitchen. We also have another dining room across the way. But right here in this room, there is an eat-in kitchen. There is a full video. I will leave a little snippet here of how it does look, but then you can check out the full video if you want all of the details of this half of the kitchen. Now, you might've remembered in my original Victorian farmhouse kitchen renovation video, I mentioned the nook where my computer sits would all be cabinetry. So that's gonna be another project, and we're gonna be getting started on that soon. So I didn't really realize when we first started this whole process that there was basically four quadrants of renovation. So we have the main kitchen area behind me, which is what I'm showing you today. We have the eat-in kitchen area, which I shared with you a few months ago. We have the office area, which is coming soon. And then the pantry, again, I have tons of ideas for that. That is coming soon as well. So I'll say we're at probably more than halfway done with this because this space is larger but those will be coming soon. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living in a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.